This little device is a USB joystick that sends MIDI pitch bend commands. The joystick itself is the same as you'd find on a PSP games console, which is an interesting mechanism that keeps the whole thing very small and flat. Inside, you've guessed it, we've got an AT Tiny 85 running VUSB. The first one of these was built as a commission for a harmonica player called Brendan Power. He was one of the first customers for a device called the DM48, which is a MIDI harmonica built by Eric Leckholm. The DM48 apparently works very well, but there's no easy way to bend notes. Uh, on a real harmonica, you bend notes by changing the shape of your mouth and throat, but there's no easy way of detecting that. We did consider a few methods of trying to measure the resonance of your mouth, but Nothing really presented itself as an obvious solution. So, Brendan's idea was to just create a retrofit device that can stick on top of the MIDI harmonica and through something like a joystick let you bend notes up and down. We went through a few iterations and eventually came up with this. What we've done is decide to use all four bend directions for different bend amounts. So, pushing it in this direction bends by one semitone down Pushing it in this direction bends two semitones down, in this way goes three semitones, and in this direction goes for two semitones up. I'm pretty sure on a real harmonica you can only bend downwards, so th this configuration works quite well. Brendan already sells a bunch of harmonica accessories, so we figured it was maybe worth selling this too. And I made up a whole batch of them. This is where it started to get difficult, because in the first edition I'd calibrated the voltages coming out of this joystick by hand, just sticking the numbers into the source code. But that's not really viable for a whole batch. Each joystick seems to be slightly different, even though I bought them all from the same seller. I wanted to make it possible to update the firmware over USB. I, I didn't get round to that, but even if I had, the calibration would still have been a chore. The best solution is to stick the same source code on every joystick, but then load the calibration numbers out of the EEPROM storage on the ATtiny 85 So I'll just demonstrate the tool I made to do this. This is a JavaScript-based program, so it's cross-platform, and it's using the Web MIDI API to speak to the joystick. The commands it sends are via MIDI sysx, and the first thing it sends is it tells the joystick to go into calibration mode and uh, then the joystick will start to send the raw analog to digital converter values uh, on two separate MIDI channels. And you can see them plotted here as I rotate the joystick. So I've got one channel there and one channel here. And these yellow boxes are essentially the calibration numbers. So we can drag them around. So once we've identified the limits that need to be in place, especially the dead zones in the middle, um, this joystick's behaving quite well, but uh, on lots of these joysticks, especially when they're brand new, the position they snap back to in the middle tends to be quite different as you release it. And obviously it's very important that when you let go, it has to send a pitch bend value of zero, otherwise it'll always be out of tune. So once these numbers are decided upon, then we need to send them to the joystick. So to send data to the device we're using MIDI sysx, which by the way it's defined is only 7-bit. The 8th bit is used as a flag to say that the sysx is ending. So to send binary data we have to transform it into nibbles and then reconstruct them on the device, which isn't that difficult to do, it's just a bit tedious. Um, once it's got the binary data it can write it into the EEPROM and uh, once it boots up it can read out from the EEPROM straight into a C structure and use that in its calculations. Uh, but the calculations it's doing are, of course, floating point calculations, and this is an 8-bit device with no floating point unit, so we really want to minimise the amount of processing it has to do. Um, and we can avoid most of the calculation by pre-processing the coefficients that it needs to multiply by um, before we send it to them. But that means we're now trying to send a floating point number onto the device, uh, and that means in binary data it's uh, defined in the IEEE 754 standard. Now, if, if this program was running in C, we could just uh, form a union and read out the binary data from the structure and transmit it directly, but um, that's, that's not going to work because we're in JavaScript. So this means re-implementing the IEEE 754 um, definition, which is, again, tedious but not too difficult. Um, and once this is then, if we click Calculate, we can transforms it into the binary data that it needs to send, then it sends it over SysX, and eventually... Click right to device, 
it, we can leave calibration mode and this will now be transmitting the pitch bend values correctly. So just to close up here, the numbers it's sending are for a synth bend range of 3, uh, minus 100% for minus 3 semitones, plus 66% for plus 2 semitones, minus 66% and minus 33%. And every time we let go, it goes straight back to zero, which is perfect. I found this whole setup really quite satisfying, and it actually works really well. Once I got the software working, I was able to calibrate all of the joysticks very quickly. It would be fairly trivial to add more parameters to this, uh, such as uh, the MIDI channel it transmits on. We could have customised that fairly easily, but uh, I didn't get around to it. One very beneficial part of this, though, is that since we have access to all of the scaling coefficients, we can customise which direction of the pitch bender does what bend. Pitch bend numbers are more like a percentage than an absolute number. It's always scaled to an internal maximum bend range that's set at the synth. To get our three semitone bend here, we set our bend range to three semitones, and then we send 66% for two semitones, 33% for one semitone, and 100% for three semitones. Um, but Via this calibration tool, we can even change what the expected bend range of the synth is, since all of the coefficients are derived from that number. So if we want to change the maximum bend range, or which direction does what, we just put those numbers into our calibration tool and recalibrate. So one of the reasons I made this video is, of course, we've built a batch of these. I don't expect to sell too many of them, but if you do want one, they are for sale on Brendan's website. But it is just an 80 tiny 85 a USB port, and a tiny joystick in a tiny package. So I'm thinking there must be some other uses for such a thing, either in MIDI as a controller of some sort, or anything else. I mean, it's just a USB port. It could emulate anything, like a, a mouse or a keyboard or volume control. I don't know. So if you have any ideas, let me know. It was quite a fun experience making and selling an electronic product as an individual. I think we'll probably try and do the same thing for some of the other inventions, like the breath controller or the synth cable. I know a few people have asked to buy those, and I sold a couple of handmade ones right at the start. Um, we'll see how it goes. There's a very long page on mitzal.com about this pitch bender and the development that went into it, along with instructions for the calibration tool. So check those out if you are interested. <laughs>